again because I got interrupted. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Steph and this is Ordinary Plant Girl. If you are new here, thank you for clicking on this video. And if you are returning, thank you so much for spending more of your time with me. Today I wanted to go through my largest and easiest house plants with you. <clears throat> my voice is still trying to come back. And I mean, I just gotta say that if it's large in my house, it has to be easy because that's how it got large in the first place. So I do have six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven of them. But I am gonna say that three of them are the same kind of plant, but different varieties of that plant. So if that is something you're interested in seeing, please stick around. Okay, so we're just gonna start off right behind me. So you can kind of see a bit of this girl in the background here. This is my Monstera Deliciosa. Now, she should be bigger. She has been bigger. I got her at the end of 2019. We had a root rot issue I had to deal with with this plant. Um, after that, it was thrips and if I'm honest, currently it is still continuously thrips. So it never gets them that badly because I'm always, I'm hyper aware of it and I pay attention and I'm kind of on top of it that way. I do use beneficials, uh, which I do actually have to order more of because in the winter, in the winter I stop getting and, and using the beneficials and I tend to uh, treat so whether I'm using a, um, a miticide or if I'm using my, my favorite thing to use is Dr. Doom's Thrip Killer. That stuff is the best. Um, so I do tend to use that, but also in the winter, the growth slows. So I have had to cut her back numerous times. I do actually have a propagation of this plant in my plant room. So I have two of them but she's just, she, she's trying, she's a fighter. I, I gotta give her that, she, she is a fighter. This plant has not given up, so I have not given up on her, and I refuse to throw it away. I just do, we've been through way too much. So that is my Monstera Deliciosa. Okay, so now we're going to pan down a bit, and the other three that are the same type of plant, but different varieties, are right underneath her. You do have to excuse the condition of one of them because my dog kind of had anxiety and, and, and ate him. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So what you can see here are my philodendron congos. So this one here, this big girl here is kind of my, my OG. That is my philodendron green apple Congo. Um, underneath her, this one right here, the one that has been eaten um, by my dog. This is just a regular green Congo. And then over here, we have got my Rojo Congo. So these are all really big. Um, especially this one here, just you can tell by the size of the leaves on her that she's, she's a big girl. Um, all of these have been really easy. The care that is needed for them is so minimal. Literally, all you have to do is water them, possibly feed them, and just leave them. You, they can dry almost all the way out. They don't seem to have a problem with that. And, and it's funny, you don't really realize that they're um, showing you their needs until you actually water them and see them perk up. It's hard to explain, but if you do have any of these, then maybe you'll understand what it is I'm trying to say. But the one of the other things I notice is you find Rojo Congos all the time. You'll notice that the bottom leaves here are bigger than these top leaves. 
and since I've moved it down into this space, it is under a Sansy grow light, but since I've moved it down under here, it's just, it hasn't given me the large leaf growth. This one as well has kind of diminished over the winter, the, the large leaf growth that it was giving me. But when spring and summer rolls around again, I am pretty confident that they will boost themselves back up again. And because my green Congo is having a little bit of a struggle, uh, hopefully it bounces back. There is a new leaf coming in right here. So it doesn't look like it's gonna be very big, but it's a new leaf nonetheless. The difference between the green apple Congo and the green Congo, one of the other things that I don't see very much of anywhere is a green apple Congo. And the only difference between these, I'll probably have to put in some B-roll that I took before this leaf here un unfurled. Um, actually, you should be able to see it. Let me take you off the tripod. If you look at the back of this, this is the green apple Congo. The reason why it's different is because it has that red blush on the back when it's unfurling. And it is kind of a, a lighter green in color. Now this one here, which is just a regular green Congo, I don't know if you can see, it probably can't, can't tell, but there's no red on this leaf whatsoever. That is basically the, they're all the Congos. They are one of my favorite philodendrons. Um, I will always have a Congo of some sort in my collection and they are just so, so very resilient. There's just, there's nothing that you have to do for these guys at all. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, let's, uh, we're gonna have to do this a little bit differently for this one, okay? Okay, so, currently I am holding my tripod because I do have a dog in the way and this is just a very tight spot. So I'm gonna do the best I can here for you to show you what it is we're looking at. So it's gonna be a little bit dark because we are dealing with an open window here. Um, but yeah, so you will see here, this is my Epipremnum panatum. So this plant, also very easy. Don't mind the shaking of the tripod because I'm holding onto it. This plant has been very, very easy. I attached it to a stake and she absolutely loves it. She's about two and a half, three feet tall at this point. Um, her leaves are just getting bigger with more and more pinnations. She's got a leaf. Now here's my trouble is I should have actually turned this. This is an east facing window. So all the plants tend to kind of face this direction following the sun. So she's done the same thing. When I had her in her other position, she crawled up around this side of the stake, redirected herself because I turned it, and now is trying to crawl around this side of the stake. So I should actually just turn her a little bit this way and make that a little bit easier, but you know, it is what it is. But this plant as well doesn't complain. It needs literally nothing. I don't even think I feed it very often. I think the last time in the fall I put some Osmocote in the soil for it when I, when did I do that? Um, I actually did a video of when I had um, repotted it, but I put Osmocote in it at that time and then just kind of left it. And this is where we're at with that. So it's been a really good plant. Um, I do have two other epipremnums on moss poles as opposed to stakes, but I almost feel like I should have just put them on stakes by looking at the way this one grows. So I might do that at another time. I do want to give an honorable mention though to, if you can see it, again, we're tipping you down here, my Aglionema Silver Bay. It's large and full. I guess it's more of a full aspect of it, but 
This plant too has been easy to care for. Uh, it doesn't ask for anything. If I forget to water it, it's completely fine with that. And I think, oh, I thought it was gonna pop me out a flower, but it's not a flower, it's another leaf, so that's fine. But yeah, this is another one that's just super easy. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there because it's just, it's an, it's an easy plant. And if you look at it this way, it, it is large. Let's move on to the last two that I have. Okay, so again, lighting, not the best. And I have to move my soil amendment buckets. But okay, so if you can see this gigantic leaf here, this is on my colocasia. I'm pretty sure it's an elephant ear. Um, I just, I can't even, I can't even show you. Um, it's so hard. Again, I'm going to have to take you off the tripod. Give me one second. Okay, so here in, in the dark, you can see this big giant leaf on the colocasia. Um, I believe it's just a basic colocasia elephant here. I'm, I know that I have it labeled as something, but I can't remember what it is. Um, but yeah, this is definitely, can't even get you around that one. Um, this is definitely one of probably the tallest plant I have anyway. Um, it's super hard to get. I might have to do some other footage for you just to make sure I get it. But anyway, a friend of mine's dad, he is going through a hard time right now and he couldn't take care of it. So he gave her to me or sorry, him. I've actually named the plant after him. This is Ralph. Um, he gave the plant to me to take care of. I did have it outside over the summer and he loved it. He loved it out there. He was growing. Um, before the end of fall came, I kind of moved it. It was still outside, but I moved it to a shadier spot because it was getting full sun. I moved it to a shadier spot to kind of adjust it to potentially coming indoors. Um, I repotted it because it was in a smaller pot than it is in now. And I think this is like a 24 inch pot, 20 inch, 24 inch pot. And before that it was in like a 12. It was drying out way too fast. So I did up pot it and it's loved it. I brought it in the house and that's when we really started to see growth. So after I transplanted it and I brought it in the house, it just exploded. But then also because I brought it in the house and it was drier in the house, we had a spider mite condition going on there. And I don't get spider mites a lot. Uh, if it, can, it comes down to pests that I have to deal with the most, it's definitely thrips. Um, once in a blue moon, um, mealybugs, spider mites, it's always either the calatheas, which I refuse to own anymore because they just continuously got spider mites, or occasionally my alocasias. But even then, the spider mites have been pretty easy for me to treat on those. And with this one as well, the spider mites were really easy for me to treat. And now because I know that it's had a problem, I'm hyper-focused on making sure that it doesn't get them or that I'm cleaning the leaves regularly enough so that it doesn't become a problem. I do shower this plant off a lot too because it still tends to, it is a water hog. Um, it drinks a lot. So there's that, that is my Colocasia elephant ear. And now we're gonna move on to the last and probably my biggest obsession when it comes to my larger plants. And again, it's just, it's super dark no matter what I do here. Um, so you're just gonna have to bear with me as far as the lighting goes. But my last, and as I said, probably the one I am obsessed the most with is my Philodendron Florida Ghost. So this plant I got 
when it was just a wee tiny little thing. And it loves being here. Ever since I put it in this spot, when I moved down here about a year and a half ago from upstairs to downstairs, um, when it was upstairs, it was in a southwest facing window. And since it's been down here, it has literally only had the light from this grow light here. And when the sun sets, it will get afternoon sun as it's like setting over here. So everything over here will just get a little bit of a shine on for about 20 minutes or so. But this plant just is, I'm, I'm obsessed, obsessed with, with her. And the funny thing is, is that I don't get the bright white leaves. I don't know if that's a feed thing or maybe these grow lights aren't strong enough to promote the intense white. So I do get more of a light green when they come out. I do have a leaf that is currently making its way out right now and it is more of a light green. Um, but I'm, I'm completely okay with that. I love, I love the Floridas in general. Um, right here, I do have a reverted Florida beauty. So it, I don't think it'll ever have variegation, but I do love the leaf shape. And this one as well currently has a leaf coming out and it's getting large. Like I've extended this moss pole already and uh, it's getting larger and then right here underneath it which you can't really see but underneath it i have a regular florida green and i've actually got two plain old florida greens and over here i've got which is a work in progress i also have a squamiferum in which i will be doing a video on shortly as well but this plant again asks for nothing all of these plants that I have mentioned today probably get watered once every two to three weeks because of the size pots that they're in. And because they're in large pots, I do put slow release fertilizer in them because I feel like trying to continuously water them through with liquid fertilizer would be a lot and they could possibly become over fertilized because of that. So um, they just, they have Osmocote in the soil the Florida Ghost is a heavy feeder, so I did put more Osmocote in with this one than I even do with the other plants. And who knows, maybe I should boost their fertilization process. But the only drawback to this plant is EFN. It has a lot of EFN. Um, I've got leaves on here that have been EFN burned. Um, I'm, you probably can't see it from there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Probably. I don't know if that'll work, but you probably can't see much of it here, but right underneath where the petiole meets the leaf, there's EFN there. And I just showered this off not even a week ago. And EFN has already dripped onto, you know, onto a lower leaf. Like <laughs> EFN has dripped onto it. It's just, it condenses itself, I find, just along the petiole. No, oh, my tummy. Along the petiole and on the backs of the leaves. But right now we're okay because like I said, I did shower this off recently. So we shouldn't have to worry too much about that. But yeah, it's just, it's such an easy plant. There's so much EFN. And I also find it's on the newer growth. Um, the older growth doesn't seem to put it out as much as the newer ones do. So yeah, it's just, I'm, I'm just, I'm obsessed with the leaf pattern. I'm obsessed with the size of the leaves. I'm just, I'm literally obsessed with this plant. So those are all of my largest and easiest plants. Okay, we're still a little on the dark side. It is a, dark kind of cloudy day as well. Um, we are expecting rain this evening, so, you know, it is what it is. But 
That being said, thank you all for being here. I hope you are all safe and well. Please like and consider subscribing to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!